When I say jump, you say how high. You got that, mister? Yes, Dad. Can't you do anything right? I'm sorry, Dad. Just do as she says. That's your mother, you know. I know, Dad. Lights up. Spotlight on Phil Whitehall. It's a good one right here. All right. Hello. Uh, Whitehall's the name, steals the game. <laughs> that's, uh, that's how I used to answer the phone in uh, Detroit over at uh, Detroit Alliance. Uh, after I stopped playing ball, 1953, 52, 53. <laughs> Jeez, I can't, I can't remember much. Uh, anyway, I'm Phil Whitehall and uh, welcome to the show or uh, as, uh, as I like to call it, the goddamn deal. <laughs> uh, they asked me to narrate and uh, whatever the hell that means. I, I, don't, I don't know. And, and to read this letter that my son, Dan, Mr. Soap, wrote me. I don't know. I don't know. I was also told to mention that I'm the father of the three kids you're about to see. Deanne, Joey, and Dan. And uh, you'll see my ex-wife, Joan, and her second husband, Nino, too. No grandkids. Did you think out of three of them, now we get one grandkid out of it. <laughs> That's funny, huh? It's quite a group over there, I'll tell you. Once Dan actually told me he blamed me for the divorce, all right? And uh, leaving him with this crazy family. And I said, uh, why do you think I got the divorce? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm gonna read the letter. Spotlight goes out. The lights up are on the forensic kitchen table, December 23rd, 1996. Deanne, Chris, Joan, Dan, and Joey are playing Trivial Pursuit in the Warren, Michigan lower middle class house of Joan and Nino Forenzi. Okay. What is the name of Ernest Hemingway Pulitzer Prize winning book about a Cuban fisherman's battle with the shark? Oh my God, ah. this isn't fair. Pablum, Trivial Pursuit Pablum. It's too easy. And this is for the win. So it's the book about the fisherman? I mean, why couldn't we get this question? We lost, Mom. Our team is finished because this game is rigged. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. The one with the shark, right? Oh God, she's toying with us. That was the question, yes. <laughs> Just to make sure. Come on, Chrissy. Yes, the fisherman and the shark. Hey, 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 you can't say anything, Mr. Hollywood. No cheating. No talking between the partners, Danny. <gasps> Wait, we forgot the three minute time limit. How long ago did we ask that question? Uh, Mom just asked her now. No, she did not. Mom asked her at least two minutes ago. Possible forfeit. Chris, uh, come on, just put us out of our misery, huh? I don't think she does know. Nino, did you do the dryer? Okay, okay, let's um, uh, let's get a timer. The one from the Boggle game. Joey, uh, go get the timer for me, would you? All right, we will give you one more minute and that's it. Nino! What? I put him in the dryer, the low cycle. What the hell do you want? Hurry up, Joey. All right, you have exactly one minute. Uno minuto. 3.50, 3.50. This could be the game changer, Mom, except I know that she knows it. Do, 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 do. Okay, okay. Final answer. The old man and the sea. I knew it. I knew it. She knew it. It was rigged. Nothing like wait until the end. Hey, way to go, Chris. Nino, did you put it to 350? 350, 350. Nino! I bet he didn't. Not the whites! Nino! Not the whites. Not the whites. I got some whites in there. Oh no, you're gonna run. They won't be ruined, goddammit. Uh, Joey, do you want some crackers? Huh? Joey? Nino, Nino, get up here right now. Dan, get the insulin from his bedroom. Joey, Joey, eat this. Eat it, Joey. Go ahead and eat it. Where's his orange juice? Go get his orange juice in the fridge, Danny. Nino! It's not here. Right in front of you. 
Let Nino do it. Nino, get up here. Get, get the juice, get the juice. Nino, get the juice from the refrigerator. Deanne comes back to put the needle and the insulin on the table as Nino enters the kitchen, finds the juice and brings it over. Joey starts to put the insulin in needle very slowly and Joan takes it from him and gives him his shot. He begins to come out of his diabetic shock. Long silence from everyone. Okay, um, rematch. Joey's good. Same teams? I knew you weren't that stupid. Sorry, I thought it was his other book. <laughs> you mean the other old man in the sea? <laughs> <laughs> the sequel, The Old Man in the Sea 2. <laughs> no, he also wrote Islands in the Stream. Oh, we're in a setting way. For Christ's sake, we didn't get one easy question and she gets The Old Man in the Sea? Pablum. Uh, Chris, you, you want to bake some cookies with me tonight? Uh, I, I think we were actually going back to the hotel and then to get some dinner, right, hon? Can't we make some cookies first, please? You promise? Just the peanut butter ones. Those were daddy's fave. Yeah, you know, we were gonna go over. I, I, I thought you were having dinner here. Uh, no, that was tomorrow night for Christmas Eve. Remember, Mom? I, I made my spaghetti sauce. Didn't you see it on the stove? Mom, I told you last night on the phone. We were just gonna hang out tonight, you know, Chris Chris was gonna go call her family. When? Last night. She was gonna call her family last night? No, um, I told you last night she was gonna call her family tonight. Can't she do it from here? It's, it's always what your wife wants. I, I guess she, she runs the show. Nina, the dryer stopped! The dryer stopped! That's okay, well, uh, that, that. That's okay. Uh, we'll do it another time. You always choose her family over me. But you love my sauce, Danny. She cooked it all day for you. It's not like you have to get back to your set anytime soon, right? Haven't really seen you on your show for a while there, little brother. You saw him a lot the last three years, though, didn't you? Uh, Chrissy, come on. You can just call your mother here. Me? Do you mind staying? Maybe calling your family from here? If it's long distance, just not too long. We had some things planned, Dan. Right. No, I think we're just gonna head out, Ma. What could you have planned? This is family game night. Oh, bummer. I mean, you said you were gonna help me. You won the game, so what's the problem, Chris? <laughs> Man, okay, okay, fine. Well, you know what, since you're hell-bent on leaving, just make sure you take your cookies, okay? I was up late all last night to make sure I got all my candy cane shortbreads finished for you guys because I know they're your favorites, even though you don't deserve them. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? Now I, I, I have to go do the peanut butters because those were daddy's favorites. And this year we will eat them in his honor. No rest for the weary. Spotlight back on Phil. It's a semi the chocolates too. At the end, uh, uh, the kisses. <laughs> she's a good girl. I'm telling you right now, she's a good girl. Lights up again on kitchen. We'll see you all tomorrow night. Are you okay, Joey? Yeah. I hear uh, the Tigers got Ruben Sierra from the Yanks. Yep, he's gonna play right. Yeah, that's cool, huh? Uh, Playing hockey tonight? Yep. Hey, um, did they fire you from your show? You you haven't been on in a long time. It must must be hard, huh? It's just not my storyline right now. Still, it must be hard. You used to be on a lot more. Uh, we're leaving, Joey. I hope you're okay. You take two shots a day, right? Yep. Well, have you heard about that new insulin pump? You can control your insulin level with it. Uh, I don't think that works for me. He's doing fine. You're not a doctor, Chris. You're just a pharmacist. Uh, <laughs> I work at a hospital pharmacy. We sell the pumps. Yeah, I, I, I take a shot in the morning, too. You sure missed that one last night. What happened? Friday. Nothing. Nothing. He fell on the steps. We were faster today. 
We went to the emergency room again. I, I forgot to check him at lunch. I don't, Mom. Got light on Phil. That's a tough thing, huh? That's a tough thing he had, that diabetes. Poor kid. Never could figure him out, though. Hey. Hey, how's it going in the basement, Nino? Oh, I'm making more cookies. Hey, that's my department, Paisan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where you going? You're not staying for dinner? You want a beer, Dan? Nino, how many times? I don't drink, okay? We're just leaving. Huh? <laughs> you don't drink. <laughs> Danny, did you want to look at the old scrapbooks with me? We were just, we, we were leaving, Ma. You know, maybe tomorrow. But tomorrow's Christmas Eve. The first one without your dad. <sighs> um, maybe before the gifts, okay? We'll see you later, Mom. Bye, guys. He starts to exit with Chris. Just like his father, my bad day and daddy. Shalom, daddy. Blackout. Lights stay on Phil, who is still holding the letter. Just like his father, what the hell is that? Huh? The marriage didn't work, all right? It just didn't work. For Christ's sake, why is that my fault, huh? Ah, skip it. I had too many years of aggravation over there anyway. You, Christ, you should have met her mother, huh? All right, all right. Here's Dan's letter. I'm going to read Dan's letter. I don't want to read it, okay? Because it's me, to me, really. It's to me. <laughs> Still need my glasses even when I'm dead. Isn't that a funny thing, huh? I'm dead if you haven't figured that out yet. This letter was sent before my botched quadruple bypass in 96. Jesus Christ, Detroit doctors, for Christ's sake. I never got a chance to read it, never read it, never, once. All right. Dear Dad, hope you're feeling better and Chris says hi. I just wanted to let you know some things I never told you before. Remember when I told you that I thought you were an alcoholic? after Dr. Reyna told you to stop drinking. The possible dementia issues. I don't mean to hurt your feelings, Dad, but I think this is still true and this operation might be a wake-up call. Sure was. <laughs> Dad, I've been reading this book about narc nar narcissism that my therapist suggested. What the hell is this? What is he talking about? It says I was the scapegoat, em, 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 empath of the family, and Deanne the golden child, John the lost child. What is this? I don't understand it. I don't. He could never get along with his mother. That was the problem. That was it. Once Dan actually asked me to live with me, that's ridiculous. I gave him the money they all asked for, and Joan too, all right? Bailed his sister out that time with the house. No flood insurance, I think. Anyway, for years I said that Joan's his mother, Deanne's his sister, and that's just how it is. Get used to it. Rise above it, for Christ's sake. That's what I said on every goddamn call Dan said to me. Dan, Dan said... Dad, I'm having trouble. And I said, just get along with your mother, for Christ's sake. Can't you get along with your mother? Every goddamn call. You saw how they both took care of Joey. And, and, and yeah, Deanne gets a little bossy, sure. But she's a good girl. She's a good girl. She was great. My first, you know. Couldn't keep a husband, but I don't blame her for that. Never liked that fellow, hippie, not responsible. And, yeah, and Nino seems like a nice, nice enough fellow, you know, I, he was their fa father, really. They should have gotten to him. Ah, Dan always made trouble. I don't need to read this shit, I'm dead. Throws away the letter and exit spotlight. Spotlight out. 
lights up on Chris and Dan on the couch watching TV at their hotel room. Well, welcome to the White Halls. How did you survive? Hey, I told you. I don't know if I can do this. Why do we come for a week anyway? Just a day is forever with them. Hey, I'm sorry. Is it that bad? Hablam! <laughs> hey, they're crazy on the holidays. What were they saying in Italian? I don't know. Something bad? <laughs> uh, I told you about that narcissism book Tiffany gave me. Well, no wonder you hate Christmas. They all act like spoiled children and think that's normal. Your mom plays the martyr with Joey, who plays long. He's 38. Hey, he just had another episode, Chris. Because he plays hockey all night, misses meals, and doesn't use a pump. 38 years old. And then St. Joan saves him. She runs the show. Just a pharmacist. Right in front of me. She says this crap right in front of me. And that's not the first time. Hey, it's an Italian family. It's a rude family on drugs. Your sister's on speed or something, your brother is depressed, and your mom's medicine chest is full of some pretty strong pills. We don't even give them out as prescriptions anymore. And this Nino, weird. He's like her Italian parrot. Too much. It's just too much. And we have to go back tomorrow night. You know, maybe we'll just go as late as we can. You know, I won't do the scrapbook thing with my mom. And honey, you know, I told you they were all addicts. It all started when dad left. Dad was the one I liked. He was the only one who actually talked to us, not at us. Yeah, he was a normal one. Jesus. Well, he was always on his best behavior with you. He was nice to me, and I never saw him drunk. You're lucky. You know, he got mean. He used to come home smashed every Saturday after golf. He used to make me shake my head to hear the pee rattling around. I was funny to him. You never saw any of them when it was really bad. This is nothing, all right? All right. You know, I'll set some boundaries. Like not going here on Christmas? How about that being the first one? <laughs> the hotel phone rings. Lights up on Joan in kitchen looking at scrapbook. Hello? Danny? Hey, Mom. What are you doing? Watching TV. Watching TV. Those were her plans. I get it. She left her lipstick in my bathroom. Hey, she said you left your lipstick in her bathroom. Uh, we'll just get it tomorrow night, Ma. What time are you coming? Um, maybe six? That's when we open the gifts. You promised you'd look at the scrapbook before them. I know, I, I know I promised, but, uh, you know, maybe we could do the scrapbook another night. You know, it's going to be all kinds of crazy with everything going on. But you, you promised. Well, what's Chris going to do? You know, while we're doing that, what's Chris going to do? Just get off, Dan. She can just make plans to watch TV like she's doing now. Mom, it's just not the best night, okay? I promise we'll look through it before we go. Our tradition, you know, we, we've been doing this every year. You're, you're going to ruin our special tradition. Why are you crying? It's, it's not that big a deal, okay? I said we'll do it. We'll do the scrapbook before I leave, okay? I'm going to go now, Ma. You're just like your father. Yeah, I'm just like my father. Jesus, Ma. He just died. Hang up. I know, Danny. That's why I need you. To remember him with me. You know, I miss him. I know. I know you do, Ma. We why, all do. Why did he leave me? What did I do wrong? You know, he brought that secretary right to my home. Brought her right to my living room. That wasn't the only one. He never drank much in the early days. You know, one beer a night, that's all. Six pack was there all week. They called him Blackout Phil, you know? Right. Blackout Phil, Mom. You're different now ever since you met her. Oh my God. I'm not. I'm not different, Mom. I'm not different. Dan. Shh. What? No, not you, Ma. You don't love me anymore. 
Mom. You need to come tomorrow, Danny. Come by yourself. I need you. I can't do that, Ma. Hello? So what's the deal with the scrapbook anyway? So we look through old photos of her and dad from the old days and when they weren't first married and all. She still can't get over that divorce. Even when he's dead. <laughs> Always ask me what she did wrong. Maybe making him quit what he loved. How about that? This is Norman Rockwell and acid. Blackout. Phil's spotlight is up. He angrily re-enters. Oh, for Christ's sake. I stopped playing baseball because I was still in class B with the Tigers. Norfolk. And Dan's sister was on the way. Simple. Minor league money didn't support a family. Joan was worried. Her mom was worried. No big deal. I quit. I quit. I did that. Chris was wrong there, okay? She was wrong that time. By the way, I never heard anybody call me blackout Phil, ever once. Ridiculous. Spotlight out. Lights up on the same kitchen living room area. Everyone is now in the living room area the next night, December 24th, Christmas Eve. Nino! We're Lights opening up. the gifts now. Okay. Okay, mom, it's your turn. No, 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 no. What about Joey? We already did him. He'd be done. <laughs> All right. Uh, you're the last, Danny. Uh, Danny, you can you can start with mom. This is from Chris and me, mom. Oh, thank you. Did you get this at Kmart? I saw that they had these uh, baskets in the front. <laughs> Nordstrom's actually in LA. Uh, Joey? Centennial? How did you know? How did you know I wanted this, Nino? Remember when I said I wanted all the seasons of Centennial? Thank you, Joey. Here's mine, Mama. Oh, great. It's a large, right? Remember I told you I want, I, I need a large now. No, no, it's a medium. But that's okay. Our family is all together and that's my best gift. Except for your dad. Joey wins. What? Okay, hey, hey, what about Papa Nino? Where are the gifts for Papa Nino? <laughs> I light up on Phil. And Nino and De Deanne weren't that friendly after Joan passed, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I guess there was a some sort of fight about her will. Apparently, Joan saved a lot of money, and, uh, and Nino said it was his, and Deanne and Joey want to sue him. Uh, Dan wouldn't. Said Nino was power of an attorney and, and not as stupid as he looked. And then he also said something about Nino's brothers being in the, in the Detroit mob. <laughs> Ridiculous. I didn't, I didn't believe that stuff. Anyway, I hear Dan stop talking with him after that. His own brother and sister. You believe that? Still doesn't. Stupid. Stupid. There was more to it than that, but I, I, I can't remember even when I'm dead that what they tell me. It's, it's isn't that funny thing? Jesus, you, you, you think they give some of your memory back when you die, right? Lights back up on family room. Uh, Joan, can I use your phone to call my mom for a minute? Uh, we're still opening gifts, Chrissy. Chris. Oh, okay. Oh, we forgot Nino, Chris. All right. <laughs> oh, God, jeez. You always want to leave. That's okay. It's all right. Danny can be the LA representation. No, I'll go with her. Show her where the phone is. But we're opening Christmas gifts. You're ruining another tradition. Are you really not part of this family anymore? Go ahead, doesn't matter. It's just Christmas. We'll be right back. She's just making a phone call to her mother. Her mom. Her mom, mama mia. <laughs> Don't use mine. She can use the one in Nino's bedroom. 
Is it long distance? Hey, I'll, I'll pay you when the bill comes in. That's okay. It's Christmas Eve. Thanks. We'll be right back. Back out. Lights up on Nino's bedroom. Chris and Dan on stage speaking sotto voce. I don't need to call my mom. I thought you said... It's not nice, Danny. He makes you guys compete even at Christmas. She's just like this at holidays. She likes everything perfect, like Joey's centennial gift. Centennial! Jeez, of course he knows what she wants. She, he watches TV with her while he socks away his teaching money rent free. Did you see him sit there when the check came last Tuesday at Olive Garden? And she goes nuts over the one stupid gift he does get from her little baby at Christmas. Who cares about the damn gifts anyway? Hey, they take care of him, you know. He has diabetes. Lots of people have diabetes and live normal lives. He's always going into shock in the emergency room every other week. It's nuts. Well, you saw what happened last night. Just don't buy it. The shock may be real, but it seems like he causes it himself. Hey, you said that, okay? Didn't you say he got arrested for some scam once? All he needs is a pump. The best thing for him to, to do is to move out. Drama, your soap is nothing on this family. Why do you come back? I don't know. I really don't. I'm sorry you had to see this, but I told you. You didn't believe me, okay? Once, I broke her Curier and Ives Christmas bulb and she ran into her bedroom and she cried for two hours. It's nuts, okay? I know that. She's nuts. They're all nuts. I've been embarrassed my whole life. And why do you come back? Because they're my family. Families don't have to act like this. Did she used to hit you? No. Did your dad? No. Well, when I'm near you and move suddenly, you flinch sometimes. I ask why and you say, I thought you were going to hit me. Let's just go back to the hotel. Boundaries. Don't let them bully you anymore. Remember when you told me about the time you almost drowned when you were four? When you went into the deep end of your neighbor's built-in pool to get the beach ball and the only one who noticed and saved you was the neighbor, McHugh? Your mom and dad were drinking and listening to the music 30 feet away, not even watching. Abuse is not just physical. Your mom still can't see you. And you're a good guy. You don't owe them anything. It's, it's all so conditional. Even Deanne and Joey seem to resent you. Dad seems like the only one who ever loved you. He was at the pool too, wasn't he? Spotlight back on Phil. Why bring this pool... Why? This is ancient history, you know? Jesus Christ, why show me any of this stuff, for Christ's sake? It's got nothing to do with me. I don't want to read this crap anymore. I don't want to do any narration. I'm just, I'm just going to read this letter like you wanted. I'm going to read the letter, and I'm ready to read it. All right, I'm ready. Uh, what the hell is this? <laughs> All right. You know what it is. I'll tell you what it is. Chris is a troublemaker. All right? Dan used to tell me that. I didn't believe her. Shoulda. Lights up on Chris and Dan in Nino's room. No, mom said she's getting tested next week for that lump they found. Maybe that's why I came back. Chris, she has abandonment issues, okay? Her own dad left her mom when she was five. That's not your fault either, honey. You're not guilty. Oh, Jesus. Not, not, out. Guilty. Lights not, back guilty. not guilty. What is this, Matlock? Joan, Joan did die from breast cancer that year. 97, I think. They, I was dead, but they keep us posted on the big stuff. 98, I think it was 98. I'm sure. It was a year after me. Uh, that much I know. Uh, and the kids had some fight about about that too, about when Joan was dying. You believe that? About how to take care of her. Is that, is that crazy? 97. <laughs> I don't even know what year it is now. <laughs> I died in 96, that much I know. About a year after uh, Dan and Chris moved me into assisted living. 
This place isn't much better, I'll tell you that. Jesus, I needed a drink. <laughs> Just so you know, they don't let you do that here, so it can't be heaven. Jesus. All right. Okay. All right. Let me read the letter. I'm just going to read the letter and get the hell out of here. All right. <laughs> Where was I? Right. The goddamn scapegoat stuff. Oh, God, I need a drink. Lights up on forensic kitchen set. Phil bolts from the spotlight to get a beer from the fridge, puts the beer on the counter and starts to read. Dad, I'm going to write a play about my family, warts and all. Will you promise you'll be okay with that? I'm, I'm not reading this. He puts the letter on the counter and starts to open the beer. I'm telling you right now, I'm not reading this. Dan enters overlapping Phil and takes his beer away, pointing to Phil's spot. You are reading this and you belong over there. Phil starts going back to his spot with the beer. Leave the beer. Phil puts the beer back in the fridge and goes to his spot. Dan stays in Forensic Kitchen. Here we go again. Dad, how many times, huh? You can't drink here. I'm gonna answer your question. Can't I just get along with your mother? No, who the hell could? You couldn't. Careful. <laughs> you know, she said I was the problem. Not the spoiled gold digger Deanne and the con man Joey. Now that's enough. That's enough, that's enough of that. Those were my kids. Yeah, it was easier to pay them than to spend time with it, wasn't it? Hmm. They were spoiled and you were played. I said, that's enough. What are you gonna do, huh? You gonna hit me again? Kick me like your old man kicked you? That worked, right? You left me with three narcissists and a mobbed up magpie over there. It was a fucking nightmare. All right? I had to cut them all out of my life and it nearly killed me because I love them. I love them. But I don't think they ever loved me. I thought it was my fault, you know. That I just needed to get along because it was family. I had to get my inhaler because I couldn't breathe because of them. Probably your asthma again. You don't wanna read the letter? You don't want to get out of here? Yeah, nod your head again. What? I said nod your head again. Dan, what are you talking about? Nod your head! You hear the pee rolling around? It's not so funny, is it? Look, you promised you promised things after you read that letter at Henry Ford, right before they wheeled you in. Promises are important here. He starts to exit. Wait a minute! Wait a second, for Christ's sake! Don't leave me! What is this? What the hell is going on here? A second chance. What are you talking about? Tell them the truth. About what? <sighs> Tell them the truth about the letter. Right now. Oh, for Christ's sake. Okay, I read it. I read it. I read the letter. And I promised I'd, I promised I'd be okay with Dan's play. If he ever finished it, which I doubted. <laughs> I promised I'd stop drinking too that time. I was scared. I was scared. And I said I was sorry I wasn't a better father. I promised I'd be a better father if I got through the operation. To who? What's the difference to who? God damn it. I was scared. I don't want to talk about this anymore and I don't want to talk about it in public. You've been doing all right. Rise above it. Come on, that was the deal. What? Dan, why are you doing this in front of everybody? Huh? Don't make me look bad or I just leave me alone. That's what I'm trying to do, Dad. Tell the truth about everything. This is your last chance, all right? Stop lying to them. Stop lying to yourself. Do you really want to get out of here? Bill points to his head. Hey, Dan. I heard the pee that time. <laughs> A 
after a long pause to the audience. Okay. Okay. Kids didn't play me. I'm not stupid. I saw who they were. Not their fault, not their fault at all. I wasn't much of a father, that's for sure. That's why it was just easier to give them what they wanted. Money, mostly. Like he said. I didn't do that with Dan over there because he was the one I never worried about. Good boy. Okay, here goes. I, I never thought I was good enough to play anything besides baseball. That's all I wanted to do. Being a father scared the hell out of me. Everything scared the hell out of me. So I, I had to scare them, I guess. It wasn't good, it wasn't good. And I never really loved him. Got railroaded into that one. I was hard on her. Boy, was I hard on her. I was hard on all of them because I, I was hard on me. See? Truth is, I never really liked myself very much. Left you in a mess over there, didn't I? It was a nightmare, Dad. That's why I wrote the play. Is it finished? It is now. Let's move us out of here. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>